<laughs> We're now on 11-3, simplifying radical expressions. And our first example is the root of 50 simply given the root of a number. And what we're going to learn about here is the fact that we can simplify that down by breaking it into perfect squares. The key to this is knowing your perfect squares. What are your perfect squares? Ashley, what's two squared? Two squared it is? Is what? Four. What's three squared? Join us now. What's four squared? Keep going. Keep going, Natasha. 36. Six squared, 36. Next one, Tanner. Good. After that, 64. David, turn around. 81. 100. 121. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I've run out of space. After 100, we've got 144, 169, and it keeps going on and on like that. Perfect squares. Now, why those are important is because when you break this down, you want to break it down into perfect squares if you can. So does anybody know, well, first of all, can you take the square root of 50? Is that a perfect square? So what about the square root of something times something? Is, can this be broken down into one of these times something else? 25, good. So this is the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Write that down. Square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Square root of 25 equals what? Five. Joules. Five. Five, right? So the answer is five root two, and we're done. Because you can't, you can't break the square root of two down any more than it is. Okay. Alright, we're doing now a couple more examples. These are on page 492. And they get a little bit more complicated. Now, what have we introduced here that we didn't have before? We now have the square root of 72x squared. What is here that we didn't have before? We have the square root of 72. What did we have variable. before? A variable. We have x squared now. We can deal with that. First of all, break it down into factors. You've got to break things down into factors. And if possible, break it down into perfect squares. Are there any perfect squares that go into 72? Yes, Jay? Nine. Nine. Good. So this will be broken down into the square root of 9 times the square root of 8 times the square root of x squared. That's your first step. Everybody write that down. Everybody write that down. Okay, now what is the square root of 9? 3. We write 3 root 4 root 2 because we're breaking it down, right? Root 4 root 2. And then what's the square root of x squared? What? 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 Okay, all I did here was I take the square root of 9 is 3, right? That's why we took it into square roots because we know 3 times 3 equals 9. The square root of 8, we again break it down. We've got square root 4 times square root 2 equals square root 8. And the square root of x squared equals what, Jessica? X. Why don't you just take 36? Square root of x squared equals x. Good, good idea, Amanda. In a second. So now, did everybody follow that? Because we did two, three things there, and I want to make sure you followed each step. Oh dear. Everybody see each step here? Square root of 9 equals 3. The square root of 8 breaks into square root 4 times square root 2. And the square root of x squared equals x because x times x equals x squared. Is there anybody has any questions about those four moves? Or three moves? Yes, Melissa. Melissa. Is there another way to do it? There is. And you know what? Amanda just pointed out. This is not the only way to do this. There's actually a bigger square root that goes into 72. 36. This one right here. So honestly, the best one is actually to break it into the biggest square root you possibly can. Doesn't matter. If you didn't do that the first time through, we're going to follow this through and we're going to finish it this way because you'll get the same answer. It just makes it a little easier if you do it the other way. So now what do we do? We notice there's a square, perfect square here. What is it, Chris? Four. Right. So now we've got 3 times 2. 3 times 2. Write it down. Square root 2. X which is 6x root 2. 6x yeah. root 2. And that's how we write it. Now, the 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and all we do here is we move the x onto this side of the radical sign, and we're done. We can put a box around that. Okay, that's our answer. Now, why did we write 6x root 2 and not 6 square root 2x? Natasha? That's right. We want to move everything that's not under the square root sign here to the left or outside of the house. So everything that's not in the house goes over to the left of it. And that's the convention. Whether it's variables or numbers, if it's not in the house, you move it over. If it's still underneath that roof, square root roof, you keep it there. And that's why you do it that way. Now, we're going to do the same question, but we're going to do it a different way. Go ahead and erase that. And what we're going to do is take the square root of 72x and we're going to 
break it down in a different way. We notice that the square root of 72 breaks down into square root 36 times square root 2. So go ahead with that. Everybody write that down. You're rewriting the problem and you're doing it again. Now, the great thing about the square root x squared. The great thing about that is you get to your answer much quicker. Look what happens. What's the square root of 36, Jonathan? 6. So we get 6 root 2 x. 6 root 2 x. And then we go ahead and write 6x root 2. So the same answer, but a lot easier, right? Because right here, at this part right here, you notice that there's a bigger square, a bigger perfect square that you can take out. So always look for the biggest perfect square that you can possibly take out. All right, now, on this problem right here, the square root of 3x squared plus 6x plus 3, what would be our first step? Amanda. You have to factor first. That's right. But what could we do to factor this? Does anybody see a glaring thing that we can take out of the common factor? Take out the three. Take out the three. So we rewrite it as the square root of three parentheses x squared, x squared plus two x plus one. Right, exactly. X squared plus two x plus one. Good job. Now, what do we do now? Is there any way we can factor that more? Yes, this can be factored. The, the roots, the, uh, sorry, the factors of one can add to be two. One plus one is two. And 1 times 1 is 1. So this is the square root of? The square root of 3 and the square root of x plus 1. Square root of 3. And then put this under the whole house. Square root of 3. Um, yeah. On to x plus 1 times x plus 1. Right? Well, okay, now let's finish this problem. This is the square root of 3, x plus 1 squared. Go ahead and write it that way. And now we've got the x plus 1 squared can actually be factored out. 1 squared. There you go. This is the square root of 3 times the square root of x plus 1 squared. And because that's a square, right, that thing comes out. What can we see? What, what is that going to be? The square root of x plus 1 squared. That's right. x plus 1 times the square root of 3. x plus 1 times the square root of 3. And you're done. Because if, if this were x squared, it would be easy, right? You would just say, oh, that's x. But just because it's x plus 1 inside there, it's the same thing. It's whatever's inside here squared. If it's got a square root on the outside, then it neutralizes it, and you get whatever's inside here. In this case, it's x plus 1. So x plus 1 root 3 is your answer. Any questions on that one? See, they get a little more complex. You have to know your factoring. So there you go. Okay, a question just came in about this. Someone's confused about the square root of x plus 1 squared. How did that become x plus 1? What happened to the square? Well, here's a simple exercise that's going to really help you. So you should go through it again and again until you get it. Well, we all know the square root of x squared is x, right? Well, let's do the square root of 7 squared. What's the square root of 7 squared? 7 squared equals? Equals square root of 49, right? And the square root of 49 is? We all know that. It's a perfect square. It's equal to 7. So do you see the pattern? The square root of 7 squared equals 7. The square, this works every time. The square root of y squared equals what? Y. Exactly. The square root of y plus 1 squared equals what? Y plus 1. That's right. Squared equals y plus 1. The square root of, uh, let's say, let's come up with something really crazy. Let's come up with the square root of zxy, zxy, the square root of zxy uh, plus 17 all squared. Now just square that whole thing. See, that whole thing is squared. What is that equal to? Z, X, Y, Exactly. It's exactly equal to whatever's inside of there, okay? So whatever you put in here, do you see that, Sandy? Whatever you put in here, if that gets squared and this is the radical around it, then this is the pattern. It's just whatever's inside of here comes out, okay? And there's a metaphor for that. It's like this is in the house. It's squared in the house. If you take a radical sign, it gets to come out of the house. And whatever's in there comes out. So this was x. It was squared. Radical It's equal to x. Square root of 7 squared equals 7. The square root of y squared equals y. The square root of y plus 1 squared equals y plus 1. Whatever's in the house, it gets squared. And the radical of it is y plus 1. Right here, something crazy. The square root of zxy plus 17 squared. Whatever you choose to put in there. If it's got this pattern of having a radical around it and a square, it's going to come out evenly. All right? So let's go do some more exercises. Let's do some stuff from your home.